Hi everybody, it's me, Cory T, and in this video I want to talk about how when manifesting a relationship or a specific person, uh, for me, there were many moments where I thought, oh my god, I have ruined everything and I'm so embarrassed and I can't believe I did that and it felt like I was distraught about things that happened, right? And I was inspired to do this video because I had a client who came to me and she was saying, I just can't believe that I sent that text. Like, why did I do it? I've ruined everything. And he didn't reply. And I just feel so mortified that I've done this. And it reminded me of so many moments where I'd felt like that, where I'd felt like, oh God, it's over. I have ruined everything. And I felt so small and weak and embarrassed and stupid, which wasn't true. It was never true. And now I look back at those moments and honestly, I just laugh at them because they're actually quite funny and they're quite good stories. And I hope that if nothing else, that this video will either make you laugh or it will give you some perspective on your situation right now. Maybe you've done something or said something and you wish that you could revert it and take back the text message or unsay the thing that you said or the thing that you did. Um, but you know, in time, you'll be able to look back at this and see it differently and tell the story and it won't feel so big. And maybe it was just meant to be, you know, in these moments where things like this happen, I always just think, okay, it was meant to be. Never mind, moving on. So, right, some of my memories about things like this that happened. One of them was when I'd only known Johnny for a few weeks and I was walking home from work. We worked in the same place and I was walking home from work and we hadn't really spoken very much at all. We just like said hi a few times or like shared a couple of looks across the room or whatever. And I thought, oh my God, who is that? And uh, <laughs> I was walking home from work and it was one of those days where I thought, I don't want to see anyone. I just feel my worst and just tired and I had no makeup on. It was just one of those days where you really don't want to bump into anyone. And I thought, I don't want to bump into anyone. And I went into the supermarket and for some reason I was just craving cheese. I just wanted a bag of cheese, grated cheese. <laughs> so I went and bought this bag of grated cheese and I was eating it like it was a bag of crisps. I mean, it was that bad. I was just having one of those days. And I walked past this bus stop and I thought, oh my God, there he is. And before I'd seen him, he saw me and I thought, oh no, it's too late, he's already seen me. And he like smiled at me and I walked over to him and I said, hi. And I was like, um, do you want some cheese? And I was like, just trying to be cute and friendly and stuff. And then he went, I'm all right. And I was like, all right, okay. See you later then. <laughs> it was just so embarrassing. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do, I just offered him some grated cheese. No one wants a bag of grated cheese or at least someone else's bag of grated cheese. It was so embarrassing. So I went home and I just thought, oh, what? why? He, he, now he thinks that I'm just the, the girl who offered him some grated cheese. And I just had to be mortified for a few days about that. That was really embarrassing. Um, but, you know, at this point, it wasn't very intense. I wasn't, like, desperately trying to manifest him or anything. I'd only just met him, but it was still part of my journey. And it was just one of those moments, right? So I was like, shit. But it turned out okay. And actually, now, when we talk about it, he thinks that that whole thing was really cute. <laughs> he didn't know what to say to me either. We were both kind of a bit awkward about the whole thing. But never mind, it's a story. And, okay, then the other thing that happened... Oh, like social media isn't social media just evil sometimes so social media is just an evil place where mistakes happen and things go wrong and you see things that you don't want to see and do things that you didn't mean to do and there are many of those moments that happened to me so one of them was that you know okay this was months and months later we'd had you know a thing together we'd like kissed and we'd had this really intense connection but it got too much for me and like basically we hadn't spoken for like a few months and um i was looking at our facebook messenger conversation and accidentally just pressed the thumbs up button on the messenger and it just sent a thumbs up you know like i haven't spoken to you for three months hi it was so annoying. And then what, what made it worse 
was that three hours after that, I was trying to check to see, has he seen my, you know, accidental thumbs up? What do I do? And I accidentally pressed it again, but in a panic, I held on to the thumbs up and it made a really big thumbs up. So a thumbs up like three times the size, you know, when you hold down on messenger, the thumbs up, it goes really big. <laughs> Basically, I sent him a small thumbs up for no reason. And then I sent him a really big one and he didn't reply. <laughs> it was so mortifying, you know, cause by this time I was like crazy about him and I was thinking about him all the time and I didn't mean to message him. I didn't mean to send the thumbs up, but I did. And it was just so embarrassing. Okay, it gets worse. It just gets worse, guys, okay? Right, so then what happened was months later, I mean like six, seven months later, still no word. We hadn't really spoken. We hadn't seen each other. Everyone who knew us knew that we hadn't seen each other. And you know how on Facebook, which is evil, I'm going to say it again, it's just evil, um, Facebook, <laughs> as on the status uh, thing, it says, what's on your mind? And for some reason, I don't know what planet my brain was on, but I must have thought that I was typing his name into the search bar. But actually, I just wrote his name as a status and posted it. And I didn't realise that I'd done that for a day, for a whole day. You know when you make these mistakes and you usually notice like pretty soon after, you know? But I had his name on my profile as a status for a whole day. I thought I'd searched it in the search bar. And then uh, one of my friends commented on it with question mark, question mark. And I was like, fuck, just what? In what world, what planet was I on writing his name? Like we weren't friends on Facebook, but I was friends with his mum. And just, okay, it was so embarrassing. A couple of my friends messaged me saying, why have you written Johnny's name on your status? And I was like, I don't know, I don't know what happened. Just utter like dread, terror, like no, someone's gonna find out. We had mutual friends, like one of them's probably gonna tell him. Just so embarrassing, so embarrassing. Didn't hear a word from him, nothing came of it. Now it's a funny story. But at the time, I thought my life was over. <laughs> it wasn't, as you know, because we're here together now. The other thing that I did, I mean, multiple times actually, I never learned from the first time or the second time or maybe even the third time, but then after that, I think I learned the lesson, was that I used to send these like essays, like massive essays of explaining my feelings and my entire life and all of my history and how I got to feeling the way that I felt. And the thing is that it was so long and emotionally heavy that he didn't know what to say, he didn't know what to do with that. And at that time in his life, he wasn't there to be able to respond to that. He wasn't in that place in his life. So I'd send these long messages, hoping to get a response, hoping to be understood, hoping to be validated, hoping to make him love me. And it didn't work because, you know, I was just trying to get that validation. And he would send something back that was just not what I wanted to hear, or, you know, maybe wouldn't even send anything back at all. And then I would feel so embarrassed and just like, oh, why did I send that? Why? You know, why did I say that particular thing there? I should have just not said that. And for ages, I would just dwell on what I'd written and analyse what I'd written and, you know, what he thought and imagine what he was thinking. And it was all just like really stressful. And then eventually I realised, okay, I'm never gonna do that again. I'm never gonna just bombard him with my emotions ever again. I don't need to do that. And I trusted that I would have the opportunity to just say these things in real life. I trusted that I would get the opportunity to express myself in another way at some point in my life. And I did. But at the time, I just felt so mortified and so embarrassed. But at the same time, I did sort of think, you know what, whatever. I said what I felt, that was what I felt, and I have no regrets. Those long messages were kind of like bittersweet, because in one hand, I said everything I felt and I had no regrets. And then on the other hand, I thought, why did I say all of that? Like, I didn't need to do all of that. Who was I trying to prove anything to? What was I trying to get, you know? It was just that feeling of, oh, I didn't get what I want. 
I didn't get what I wanted from that. And that's the thing that you've got to watch out for. If you're ever going to think of sending something or doing something, you've got to ask yourself, am I okay with the idea that I might not get what I want from this? Am I doing this to get something or am I doing this for myself? Because if you're doing it for yourself, then that's good. But if you're doing it to get something, then you're going to be met with that feeling of like, oh no, why did I do that? I wish I hadn't done that. And you've got to ask yourself why you're doing these things. So that's what I was talking about with my client the other day. You know, if you want to send something, ask yourself if you're okay with whatever the response is. If you're like, right, this is for me and I've just got to do this. And if he replies, good. If Or she replies, good. If she doesn't, good. That's fine. I'm doing this for me, so it doesn't matter. Then it's okay. Then you don't, you're not met with that horrible feeling. And the other thing that lots of you know about already is that time when I was in Italy and we hadn't spoken for like six or seven months or eight months or something. And I just sent him that emoji of me just going like that, like on WhatsApp. I just completely accidentally sent him that. It was like the universe just pressed it for me and sent it without me having any review of what was sent and it was just like no why 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 did that have to happen I was so embarrassed I was like oh, I didn't mean to speak to him I wasn't supposed to speak to him I was supposed to be in no contact now I've ruined it and I'm the one that's ruined it and I thought all of these things but you know it was that in that case it was a bridge of instance because it meant that we um started speaking again and it was fine but you see it wasn't my intention it wasn't what I was hoping to happen it was just something that I accidentally did I wasn't consciously doing that in order to get a result you see it was totally an accident so don't try doing that if you're trying to get the same result if you're trying to get anything just ask yourself okay I don't need to do that right now okay fine so as you can tell like it's so easy for me to talk about these things now and actually I find them really funny and I enjoy telling those stories because they never mattered. It didn't matter. None of those things mattered. And I hope that this gives you some perspective about your situation, wherever you are now, whatever's happened, whatever's been said or done. There are lots of things that we can look at and take them less seriously. And I hope that you can imagine yourself in the future telling these stories in a way that makes you feel better, that makes you laugh, that makes other people laugh. Because of course that is very possible. And just, you know, try to see the funny side of these things sometimes. It really is such a relief. And um, yeah, we need laughter. We need humour. We need fun in this journey to creating what we want. Don't take it so seriously. Just have fun with it and enjoy every day as much as you possibly can and put yourself first. And also remember that when you feel that feeling of like feeling, oh my God, why did I do that? Oh no, I've ruined everything. That is also a signal that this person's on a pedestal and they haven't got that power over you. They can't have that, you know? Get them off the pedestal, remember who you are, remember how beautiful and caring and loving and what a good person you are and um, just get on with your day. It's okay, it was meant to be and that's that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, if you would like some one-to-one -one coaching then please let me know. The link to find out more about that is just below and you can email me or message me on Instagram and I will see you in the next video. Bye!